I am Dr. Chandrasekhar Puli, Senior Gastroenterologist, Advanced Interventional Endoscopies at Kim's Hospital. Today we are going to talk about, about the gastroscopy and the safety mechanisms to do the procedure. The common gastroenterology investigation includes endoscopy. A lot of people get confused. What they mean by endoscopy is the tube that goes through the mouth. But by definition, endoscopy is endo means looking inside, scopy means looking. So it all depends on which part you are examining. For example, you are looking in the stomach, stomach is called gastric, so it is called gastroscopy. Or if you are looking in the colon, it's called colonoscopy. So, please don't get confused when a doctor uses a word called endoscopy, it only means just looking on the top end. <clears throat> this is the common misnomer and confusion that patients do express in my clinic. So, I just want to clarify few basic questions what most of my patients do experience some anxiety relating to the gastroscopy. Basically, if you have problems in the upper stomach, for example, people have a lot of acid coming back into the throat or people have a lot of pain in the upper stomach for ulcers or somebody thinking that if they eat small quantity of food and they can't able to digest the food, it's got early satiety, all these are and various other conditions, somebody vomiting blood, all these are various reasons why people have gastroscopy. And also an anxiety is somebody putting a long tube in your mouth is also scares a lot of my patients. And when you actually sit with them and explain the reasons and how it is done, people do able to appreciate it. So this procedure can be done with sedation or without sedation. And we decide on that based on patient's preference and also the anxiety levels of the patients or the previous experience with regarding the procedure. Majority of the gastroscopies are done without sedation. I've been doing these procedures over 15 years and I've done more than 20,000 gastroscopies in my lifetime. My experience with this procedure is that majority of the patients are better off not having sedation if they are not anxious or if they don't have preference to have the sedation. And my own personal experience with this procedure is that it's very quick and as long as you can reassure where they might find this discomfort. For example, you put in the black tube down the throat and they here there is a muscle at the back which they feel that you as you're going around they might feel like a pressure like feeling so if you can explain to the patient that this is the part where you will feel like this and also allow the patient to watch the screen so that they are feel like they are safe they know what's happening and the other thing is the gagging reflex where patients have like oh my god i can't and they want to bring things up. So you reassure them that taking the breathing through the nose and breathing out through the mouth actually reassures the patient. So majority of the patients can be done without sedation as long as you connect with the patient and explain what you're doing. And the, generally the procedure lasts less than 10 minutes. That gives you an opportunity to examine clearly every part of the stomach. And another group of patients who are very anxious would like to completely sleep during the procedure, there's nothing wrong and there are sedations and normally my preference is to have conscious sedation wherein you just take the anxiety bit where the patients are still connected with you, they can open their eyes talking to you but they don't remember the details of the procedure. This is called conscious sedation and my preference is towards that. 
and very rarely, for, especially for children and extreme anxiety patients, you can go for the deep sedation, which can be proper fall. So this is all about the preference about the, what, whether they want sedation or not. Generally, they need to fast for at least six to 10 hours, depending on the medical problems. And if you're doing the morning appointment, I tend to tell the patients to fast from the midnight and not to drink anything prior to the procedure in the morning. And currently, because of the diabetes and various other features, patients have reservations to say whether they can't able to sustain the long fasting because if they have eaten the last food at nine o'clock, technically the last night, and then you're, they're having the procedure by 10 o'clock the next day morning, and uh, they're diabetic and they're elderly, they have a lot of uh, reservations about it. So in those type of patients, I normally recommend if they're having a procedure at around nine or 10 o'clock, I tell them, look, if you want, you can have a clear liquid at around before six because that three hours will give that liquid to go away from the stomach. The whole idea we talk about fasting is because if you got any food content in the stomach, when we're doing the procedure, we put air in to expand the stomach so that we can look at every corner. That air automatically gives the reflex to bring the stuff back and their risk of aspiration. This is the whole idea to explain to them why they need to be fasting. In some scenarios where patients have problems with the contractions of the stomach muscles, which we call that as gastroparesis, despite having 12 hour fasting, they do have problems where they have food in the stomach for longer periods. These patients, we tend to put them on the liquid diet for 24 hours so that they gives you enough time for the liquids to go down from the stomach. Especially solid takes longer time to empty from the stomach. Okay, so this is crucial to understand the fasting aspect for the gastroscopy. And from the clinician point of view, we should be taking at most care to look at every part of the stomach to make sure there is no early changes. For example, patients who had a longer acid problems, they have problems developing early cancerous changes and we need to identify that. So in ideal, it should take six minutes to actually withdraw, which means after you have entered into the small bowel, by the time you're coming back, it takes six minutes to inspect every corner of the stomach to make sure that we are not missing anything. From the patient's perspective, it might look longer, but as long as you connect to the patient and explain to them and you give them an opportunity and you keep decompressing the stomach and blowing air in, which actually shoes on the patient. And also the most common feeling, and in fact, my personal experience with the gastroscopy is the fact that as we are spraying the back of the throat to numb the, the back of the throat, we feel that there is a lot of secretions. We feel like we are aspirating on it. So always make sure the mouth is being sucked constantly in a way that they don't, they are being reassured. There's no secretions to fall into your larynx. These are the preliminary things that we should be putting in practice to make sure the safety of the patients is being continued. Finally, I recommend that all the scopes should be disinfected through a proper channels by a disinfectant machine, especially in the pandemic area, because you can have cross infections. And if you need more information, please contact us at Kim's or you can log into my website to look into the requirements for gastroscopy. Many thanks.